It was a raucous filled House chambers for the annual State of the State address. Governor Lee was applauded and booed. The chamber was noisy with political discourse as GOP lawmakers tried to use applause to drown out the opposition yelled from the balcony. The governor began with the assessment of the state of the state. As we enter our sixth year of working together, the state of our state is strong and resilient and ready for the future. And that is thanks to the hard work of the people in this room. But there is more work to do. Tennessee is a remarkable place with a richness of passionate people of all kinds, with an unrivaled culture, deep-rooted traditions. We're also a state that is focused on opportunity and security and freedom for all her people. So in 2024, frankly, for the rem remainder of my time in office, I believe our job is to fortify that which has been built over the years and to remember the work that it took to get here. The governor took a victory lap for past successes. Now more than ever, people across this nation are turning to Tennessee as a model for economic prosperity. And it's clear why. Over the past five years, Tennessee's been ranked as the fastest growing economy of all 50 states, the number one state for fiscal stability, a top state for business, the second lowest tax per capita state in the nation, and the lowest debt state in America. Any state would envy the position that we've been in. He lauded the state's ability to attract new businesses and create new jobs. Companies have invested $35 billion in our state since 2019, creating more than 211,000 new jobs and counting for Tennesseans. That means real opportunity for families across our state, from Rogersville to Ripley. Today, Tennessee's unemployment rate is well below the national average. The state unemployment rate saw an all-time low over the summer. And our rural counties are no exception. Since day one, I believe that Tennessee's success can be measured in part by the strength of our rural communities. We've prioritized economic investment across rural counties and developed a workforce strategy that works for all Tennesseans, and it's paying off. Five years ago, we had 15 distressed counties. Today, we have just eight. And the, the statistic that really tells the story, or certainly puts an important point on it, for the first time in history, Tennessee's poverty rate is below the national poverty rate. The governor made it clear the music industry is critical to Tennessee's future and it will be protected. Tennessee's music industry grew by 21% in the last five years. Today, we are the number one state in the nation for music industry jobs. Unfortunately, Tennessee artists are facing new challenges with the rise of artificial intelligence. Well, while this new AI technology can be used for good, it can also allow users to impersonate and make fake works in the voice and likeness of others. So this year, together with members of the General Assembly, I'm proposing legislation to protect Tennessee's rich musical heritage and ensure that no one can steal the voice of Tennessee artists. We're calling this bill the Elvis Act to honor our very own king of rock and roll, as well as his family who's still working to protect his legacy. But when he got to the major issue of the speech, expanding a voucher program statewide that would allow students to use taxpayer funds to pay for private or faith-based schooling, Democrats and even some Republicans oppose the idea, saying it will take away money and weaken public schools. Governor Lee disagrees, but a balcony filled with opponents were not convinced. We have done a lot of work in Tennessee, but we still have a ways to go in providing the best possible education for every student in the state. So 2024 is the year to make school choice a reality for every Tennessee family, every family. The premise, the premise behind education freedom and the one thing that most of us all do agree on is that parents know what's best for their child's education. There are thousands of parents in this state who know that their student would thrive in a different setting. But the financial barrier is simply too high. It's time that we change that. We time, it's time that we let parents decide, and not the government, where their child goes to school and what they learn. Some are concerned 
that more choice for families could mean fewer resources for public schools. That's simply not true. You'll hear me say that over and over again because it's true. These two ideas are not in conflict. Yes, they are. There are some who will say that parents don't belong in the decision-making process about their child's education. But our responsibility is to the student and to the family, not to the status quo. The governor ended the state of the state with a message to all Tennesseans. We recognize the great challenges that lay before us, whether it's rural health care or workforce protection or others. We have opportunity and obligation, and it'll take each one of us as we debate and agree and disagree about the path forward to accomplish that which we all believe in, serving our fellow Tennesseans recognizing the dignity of each one of them, each person's God-given value, and working to make a better life and a future for them all. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.